message from somebody um, asking me a question about, they said they had $2,000 saved up and they wanted to know what they should do uh, after they got their first $2,000 saved up. Because oftentimes on this channel, guys, I talk about saving, right? Saving money and making sure you have enough money saved first initially, uh, like a couple of thousand dollars, $2,000 or $2,500 saved up in case something goes wrong pretty quickly, right? That you could automatically have the cash sitting there, it's sitting there in a high yield savings account to actually pay for an emergency. And I got a, I got a question, a comment from somebody it was more of a question, really. It's kind of almost, almost an email. And they said, um, it's kind of long, but they said, okay, I got the $2,000 or I got my initial little savings uh, uh, together, my initial uh, emergency savings in case something goes wrong. Now, what do I do? That's what they told me. They said, what do I do after I have my $2,000 saved up and just sitting there for emergencies when something goes wrong? They said, now what? What's next? So I want to just I want to do this video specifically for that to answer that question for that person, but also to maybe give a little information to other people and say, OK, what do you do? This is kind of an urgent thing. What do you do immediately once you have that that initial two thousand dollars saved up for emergency? So as you come in, guys, let me know where you're from. Let me know what city, state, country, whatever. We're just going to jump right into it today. Um, and I appreciate you being here. But. What do you do after you have that money saved up? So the first thing that I told them is once you have that money saved up, you got to ensure that you have a plan, right? Where are you going? What are you doing next? And then the next thing you got to do is you got to start focusing on your consumer debt, right? Because the more debt you have, really the less, less money you have, less available cash that you have or money every month to go towards um, anything else in terms of investing and so forth. So, the first thing you want to do when you get rid of that two, when you have that two thousand dollars saved up for emergency money, is you want to start focusing in on the debt, right? Because think about it, guys. As you get older and older and older, here's the thing that a lot of people miss: as you get older and older and older, you do not want to have monthly payments. The more monthly payments you have as you get to be 50, 60 years old, the longer you'll have to work to actually make those payments. So you don't want to go into your 50s and your 60s with payments on cars, even a payment on a home, right, at some point. But you want to get rid of all of your payments as soon as possible, because if you get rid of your payments, then guess what happens? You free up money to travel. You free up money to do things that you really want to do. So the, in my opinion, I don't care if you're 25 years old, if you're 30 years old, if you're 50 years old, as soon as you get a couple thousand dollars saved up and you're starting from scratch, now I'm talking to the people that are starting from scratch. As soon as you get that, you got to start focusing on your debt. Let me see what we got in the chat. Thanks for checking in here, guys. Like a few of you checking in. Hey, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you can hear me, guys. I, I need to make sure my audio is good. Watching from Dallas, Rhonda, good to have you. Seattle's in the house. North Carolina's in the house. Tracy from North New York City. Uh, Ch Chicago to Windy City. Gigi is here. Hello from Chicago. Also, Ms. Miss Q, beautiful. Ontario, Canada's in the house. Uh, home, Shreveport. Let's see. Uh, Larry G's in Houston, Texas. Good to have you. England, good to have you. Nebraska's in the house. How you doing? Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, let's see here. Boom, boom. South Africa's in the house. Tacoma, Washington's in the house. Miss V from Seattle, Washington, good to have you. North Kakalaki again, Philly. We got them from all over, guys, all over the country and even the world. Mississippi's in the house. Is that Batesville? Is that Panola County? Is that uh, Kosciuszko? Where is that at in Mississippi? Mount Vernon, Indiana. So listen, let's let's keep going. So, and I'm I don't want to make this a live a long live, right? But I, I want to make it sort of specific and to the point. So first things first. The, less, the, the one thing you don't want to have is you don't want to have payments. So focus on debt. How do you focus on debt? I like the debt snowball method, right? You list all your debts from smallest to largest, and then you take a certain portion of your money. I don't care if it's 50 bucks, 250 $500 every month. Whatever you have left over at the end of the month, you take that money and you put it towards the debt, right? The first one on the list. And then you, put, you pay your normal payments on all of your, your payments, and you take that extra cushion of money and you put it towards the first one. So if, you're, if your lowest debt is you owe $1,000 on a credit card, you pay 50 bucks a month for it. You take your residual income, your 
300 bucks you have left over every single month. And you put that with your 50 bucks and you pay 350 a month on your credit card until it's paid off. Then you take that 350 and you pay the normal payment of the next one and you pay that off. It's the debt snowball. I like that. Use that, right? And, you know, the other thing to think about is the fact that when you pay off debt, now you have extra money that you can use to survive, to have fun with, to play golf, to do what you want to do. But you got to hit the debt. When you hit the debt, it makes life easier. And it takes a big burden off your back if you can go ahead and get rid of the debt. So in my opinion, the first thing you got to do when you have $2,000 in, sa in savings put away is you have to hit the debt. If, is anybody in the chat debt free? Let me know if you're debt free in the chat below. When I say debt free, I don't mean your home. I mean just consumer debt, right? You have no other debt except your home or, or your home's paid off. Let me know in the chat below, guys, if we got some people like that. Let's see here. Let's see here. Boom. Okay. Let me go ahead and get that person out of here. All right, cool. We always, when we go verticals, we always have some idiots to jump up in the chat and I like to get rid of them. No big deal. They don't bother me. They don't bother me. If they don't bother you, it's cool. All right, I'll just get rid of them. Listen, so if you have no debt, let me know, right? Let's see, debt-free, Rhonda Payne. Congratulations to you, Rhonda. Maybe Grayman and Hector is debt-free as well. Excellent. Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's see here. No debt, good. Bundled debt, $10,300 or $103,000. Let's see. I always pay more than the minimum debt-free coming from Atlanta. Excellent. Congratulations. So we got some debt-free people in here. It's a burden off your back, right? You have your little emergency fund, a couple of thousand dollars set aside. Now, let me tell you, all the while, don't stop getting the match from your job. If you have a job that offers a 401k match, 403b match, get the match, right? But at the same time, if you have a job that doesn't have a match, then I suggest that you still put three to 5% of your money towards some type of retirement plan or so, towards some type of investing, uh, a Roth, whatever it may be. But you want to make sure you're still doing a little bit of investing, even when you're trying to get out of debt. That's my opinion. I know it's not the opinion of some people, but it's my opinion. It's how I work my system. So a couple of thousand dollars smash the debt as soon as you can, guys. Don't let the debt stay alone. I I, um, I had a, a video on here about, I don't know, five or six months ago, talking about how I was in student loan debt for 31 years. Literally, 1992 to 2003, I was in student loan debt. Even though I was building wealth, I, well, I kept that debt. I shouldn't have debt it, right? I, I admit it. That was a mistake, right? I should have paid it off sooner, but I kept it around way too long. As soon as I got rid of it, Weight off my back, weight off my back. And some of the people in the, in the chat could probably attest to that as well. So that's the first thing. And again, I'm telling I'm giving you sort of a blueprint for building wealth, a blueprint for what to do and answering a question. If you guys weren't here in the beginning, answering a question for a comment that came on one of my, one of my, uh, um, one of my, uh, videos, it was sort of, it was a real long comment, but it was basically, Hey, I got $2,000 done. Now, what do I do? Right. What do I, I got a couple thousand dollars for the emergency. I'm not sure where to go, where to start. Right. I'm starting from scratch. And I said, get that 2000 and then start hashing along, get your debt. Now, the second thing I told them was not just your debt, but you need to go ahead and increase your rate of savings once you get that debt paid off. Right. So it's this is the order of importance. Two thousand dollars pay off debt all the while. Three to five percent are getting the match at your job, invest it, right? And then once you get rid of the debt, now you freed up more money to go invest more money. Of course, you want to go ahead and build out your savings account, of course, but then you want to start investing more money. See, you have to increase the rate of your savings and increase the rate rate of your investments. You have to be aware and I would say cognizant of the percentage of your money that you're investing in the stock market, guys. So in my opinion, once you pay off debt, once you uh, have your emergency fund, you pay off debt, and then you build out your emergency fund, in my opinion, you need to make sure you're putting 10 to 15% of your money in the stock market. The more, the better, right? The, if you can do 20%, that's even better. This is kind of the blueprint. So I'm giving you these steps. 
if you're if you're 25 years old and you're watching this and on a replay and you want to retire when you're 55 years old in 30 years, then you should be investing about 10 percent of your money or more in the in the in the stock market for the next 30 years. Now, if you're 40 years old or more, you may want to up that to 12 or 13 or 15 percent. Right. But the younger you are, the more time is on your side. And time is of essence when we're talking about investing money. Right. Time is the key. The more time you have, the less time you have to invest. I'm sorry. The more time you have, the better. The less time you have, the less time you have to invest. So you want to increase that investment amount. Right. So the number one thing you got to do is you need to make sure you get rid of the debt. And then secondly, you need to make sure you build out your emergency fund. And then third, you want to make sure you're investing more money. Stretch yourself, right? Stretch yourself as much as possible when you're talking about, okay, now i got some debt paid off. i got my debt paid off. i got my emergency fund. Have some fun with investing at that point where you, you're pushing yourself to do more beyond the limits of where you were, right? Very important. Let me see what we got in the chat, guys. Always got to run back here and check the chat. Let's see here. Okay, I always pay more than minimum. Excellent. Fort Myers, Florida's in the house. Good to have you. Hey, somebody else is out of debt. Somebody said $5,000 left. Congratulations to you. You can do it. Keep going. Debt free. Got some other debt frees. Let's see here. Student loan, but 401k is higher. Good. Uh, appreciate you, John. No problem. Still investing. Debt free. Smash the debt. Hey, guys, hit the like button for me. I didn't say it in the beginning. Hit that like button for me if you can. I really would appreciate it, guys. Helps the uh, helps the channel grow, but more than likely, more than more than anything, it helps get this message out to more and more people. And that's what we want to do, guys. We're in a situation where we want to get common sense messages out to folks. Um, the other thing, let me give you one other thing you need to think about and think about, or need to focus on, is not only are you paying off, or you're you're having a two thousand dollar after you have your two thousand dollar initial emergency money, then you have your uh, your your debt that you pay off. Your consumer debt, not your home necessarily, because that's that's a big item, and it's usually people's biggest item. But your consumer debt, student loans, credit cards, you know, personal loans, those type of things, car debt, whatever it could be, pay off that stuff, and then you want to increase your amount that you're investing. But here's the other kicker: you have to start focusing on the asset side of your equation. You have to start focus on focusing on building assets. This is urgent, guys. This is where a lot of people go wrong, right? They And this is what sticks people in the middle class forever, for life, right? They pull themselves out of poverty. They get a college degree, you know, first one, second one in their family, and they're doing really good. But then they start to, they, they forget about the part of adding assets, right? Building your wealth by, by adding assets. When you no longer have debt, now you can start buying things that are appreciating in value, right? The asset side of the net worth equation is huge in terms of building net worth, in terms of building generational wealth, right? Because this is stuff you're going to pass on, hopefully, because you won't be here forever. None of us will be, right? But you've got to look at building the asset side, lower it. Now, when you pay off debt, you've already lowered your liability side. So really, that's the first thing you've done when you paid off your debt. You paid down those liabilities to get them low. Now, once you pay off your liabilities, or as you're paying off your liabilities, be thinking about how are you going to increase your assets? This is all wealth building. This is all wealth building starting from scratch when you only have $2,000 in your emergency fund. These are the steps to do, right? And that's why this is, I, I called it kind of urgent because it is urgent, right? If you're 25, 30 years old, you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're 40 years old, you're not sure where to go, you're just really getting your, 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 uh, your money journey going, this is urgent, right? Because time is of essence, okay? So you need to ultimately, once you do all the things we talked about, now let's focus on assets. I got to build up my assets. I can't be fooling. Now, listen, let me say this. Very important. When you pay off debt, you have to get to a point where you're committed to not going back in debt, okay? Don't go back, right? You're going to get to a point where, you know, you're going to say, man, Maybe I should maybe I should finance that washer and dryer set at zero percent finance. Eh, you know I, I'm doing pretty well now. Got out of all my debt. Maybe I should go ahead and and get me a car payment. Listen, don't do it. I'm just this is my opinion. You don't have to take my opinion. You can throw out everything I'm telling you. 
But in my opinion, don't go back into debt once you get out of debt. A lot of people do it. Don't do it. Resist the temptation. Resist the urge. Build up your emergency fund, as we talked about, so you never have to worry about, you know, keeping a credit card around for emergency purposes, right? Because you have emergency money and don't, you got to, you got to really commit to yourself because it's really easy to say, you know what? I got out of all that debt, man. It's, it's pretty simple. I can handle $500 a month for a car payment. Resist the temptation, right? And then ultimately you want to increase the asset side of your net worth equation. And you're taking heed of your net worth on a regular basis, right? Every, I say every, at least three to four, I say at least twice, but three to four times a year, every quarter, look at your net worth. I know some people that look at the net worth every month, right? And that's a little month, a little much for me. I do it twice a year, okay? And it allows me to say, okay, I'm focused on this. And if I'm focusing on my net worth, my assets, and I'm focusing on keeping my liabilities low, it's going to work in my mind that I'm not going to go back in debt. That's kind of how I justify it. Let's see here. Uh, just checking the chat again. Let's see here. Yeah, hit that like button for me, guys, as you come in. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, J Jay Winter, currently teaching my teenage son the same principles. Absolutely. Uh, U.S. debt clock. Yeah, U.S. debt clock is crazy. It's trillions right now. How long can this go on? People love applying for credit. Just reading through the chats real quick. Uh, T-bills, treasury bills, CDs, land, rental properties, all great assets to have, right? I don't, listen, I'm not going to talk you down on CD. Some people have a, a risk tolerance that's very low. They don't want to risk a whole lot. So I'm not going to talk you down off of CDs. I'm not going to talk you down off of treasury treasury bonds, right? Or T-bills. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk you down against any of those things that don't really build a whole bunch of wealth, but they're still better than nothing, right? But so, and some people, everybody's different, right? Some people watching this may be 65 years old, drawn retirement, disability, don't have much money, and they feel safer with their money at down the street at the bank getting 2% interest at a, on a CD. If that's you, cool. I'm not going to be mad at you, right? But if that's not you, you know, you need to go ahead and think about taking some risk when you invest, okay? As I said earlier, pushing yourself, putting more money towards your saving and investment, right? And that means taking a little bit of risk, right? Because risk, Reward the higher the higher the risk, the higher the reward. Anytime you're dealing with money. So, and again, let me just reiterate: when I'm talking about increasing your assets, we're talking about, uh, as a person said in the chat, land, real estate, rental real estate, commercial real estate, stocks, ETFs, index funds, REITs, whatever you're into. Those are those are things that are going to be adding wealth to you, and that's what you want to build up. Now, the reason I want you to do your net worth statement at least twice a year, maybe even once a quarter, is because it's going to force you to stay focused on a wealth building activity, a wealth building principle, which is your net worth statement, right? And the more of assets that you have, the more options you ultimately have. See, I want to, I'm trying to prepare people not just to be rich today, but I'm, I want to prepare you to be wealthy when you're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. And you don't have to rely on other people taking care of you. Not your grandkids, not your kids, not the nursing home, not, right? You, if, if you're in good health and able to, to, to be healthy, right? I want you to take care of yourself with your own money, right? And speaking of health, that's a big piece too. Make sure you're taking care of your body, making sure you're out there walking, you're staying active, moving as much as possible. But Again, you want to have options with your money. The best way to have options is to have assets. See, because when you have assets, guess what? I have I have a few rental houses. I can sell a rental house today. If I need $100,000 tomorrow, I can sell a rental house, right? If you have $500,000 in the stock market in index funds, guess what? You can pull out $100,000 if you have to. You can, if you have a million dollars sitting in the stock market, you got, and you have a couple of pieces of rental property and you got a little land over here and you got, you got options. The whole, listen, freedom, your financial freedom is 100% based on your financial options. And the more options you give yourself, the more freedom you're going to have and the more freedom you're going to feel. A lot of people spend their entire life from 18 years old to 80 years old in bondage in indentured servitude. Indentured servitude means you got to work a certain time to pay this off, except you're not working time. You just signed a bunch of loans that you have to pay off and you got to work and work and work to pay, to pay, to pay. 
You want freedom as soon as possible. The quicker you can have free, listen, that's why when you have $2,000 set aside for savings and emergency, I want you know, everything I'm telling you is to work towards freedom. Remember, the first thing I said was pay off debt, right? And that's going to get your freedom right there. Second thing I said was what? Build out your emergency fund. That's freedom. When you have $20,000 sitting in the bank or sitting in a, in, a, in a high yield savings account, that's freedom, right? When you have that money, now you said now you're not trapped. Now, if you if two of your tires go out on your car, you don't have to turn around and say, oh my goodness, I gotta go, I have to go get a payday loan, or I have to call somebody to borrow money. You're trapped. Everything I'm talking about on this video is how to not be trapped, how to break free. And how you break free is following these steps I'm giving you after you have your initial $2,000 for your emergency fund, your emergency fund, because it's all about options. It's all about choices. It's all about freedom. It takes away the stress. It takes away the anxiety. It takes away the, the feeling of de depression, right? If you get rid of the stress that's associated with debt, the stress that's associated with not having enough money to pay for an emergency if something go down, something go wrong, right? That's stress, right? So build up your assets. Your assets are going to create options. And in the end, it's all about your options, right? Let's see here. Somebody said, uh, boom, boom, boom. Mercy Fund and HYSA, absolutely. Gold and silver, some people like that. That's cool. Those are assets. I'm building my website now, self-employment. Employment, that's an asset. Building a business, that's an asset. Good. And let's see here. Northern Ireland, good to have you here, D Green. Thank you so much, man. Glad to have you here. What are your views on that? Nope. Oh, okay, so what we'll do is we'll take and we'll kick that person out. Let's see here. Debt, debt snowball. I work to work to invest, invest. Good. Use... I uh, want to be debt free. I understand that. Yeah, I'm hesitant about having people take care of me when I get old. Somebody said the black Dave Ramsey. Okay. Rich dad, poor dad. Good book. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Appreciate that, uh, QE Suba. Listen, I'm just trying to help you guys get to where you want to go. And I'm really answering a question. If you just got here late, someone asked me a question What do I do after I have $2,000? After I have my initial emergency fund that I always tell people to do, which is $2,000 or 2,500, your choice. Um, what, what What's next? And that's what I'm trying to explain. What's next? What's next is clawing out of this debt is getting free, giving yourself some choices in life, right? But, and what choices will do is it will allow you to have some control. And what control does is control allows you to feel a sense of um, accomplishment in life, a sense of, uh, uh, I can do it, a sense of belief, a sense of hope, et cetera. Right? So the number, two, so just some things to think about. Let me see. Is there anything else? Let me just see, let me run through my, my little list of things I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, so yeah, get rid of debt, um, build out your emergency fund. So you don't have to be, be, be slipping on that. And then increase your investments, right? In the stock market, in assets, whatever they may be. And then of course, of, as I said, increase your assets as well, right? That's what you got to do as soon as you have your $2,000 saved up. That's it, right? So the money thing doesn't have to be very complicated. The money thing doesn't have to be very um, hard to understand. It's 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 kind of like, like, you know, losing weight, right? A lot of us in America, at least that I can speak to because I live in America, a lot of us, we know what to do when it comes to losing weight, right? But you know, eat, eat, eat the right foods or better foods, walk more, move more, et cetera, right? We know what to do. The hard part is just doing it. The hard part is having the discipline to do it, the consistency to go, the, to go for it. See, building wealth is all about discipline and it's all about consistency. If you can do those, if you can have that in your spirit, you'll be fine. You'll get there. Discipline and consistency. Don't stop. Just do it when you're, look, save the money when you don't want to save the money, right? Pay off the debt. You got $1,500 in your hand. You're like, man, I could do anything with this $15. Pay off the debt when you don't want to pay off the debt, right? That's the thing you got to think about doing if you're trying to get beyond this $2,000. What do I do next? What's my next move? Let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. Appreciate it. Yeah. So listen, guys, here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to hit the like button. 
I want you to check out some things in the description box below, right? We got Mint Mobile. We got 24 laws of money. Mint Mobile is, is uh, my cell phone service, right? I'm using my cell phone. But I always like to, to part, I'm partner with them on most of my videos uh, because, you know, Mint Mobile's been good to me. I like them. I use them. And they're excellent service. And they're owned by T-Mobile, basically. So they, they use the largest 5G network in the world. And they're less expensive. On this channel, we're all about trying to save some money. Mint Mobile is a great way to save it. There's a link to that below. Check out the 24 Laws of Money free ebook below as well. And check that out. That's my story, but it's also 24 Laws of Money that are going to help you build your wealth in terms first starting with the way you think about money, right? So if you have $2,000 and you're just getting your journey started, don't be discouraged. Uh, don't be down. You can do it. I don't care what age you are. 50, 60, doesn't matter. 30, 40, doesn't matter what your situation is. I don't care if you're on disability. I don't care if you're getting Social Security. I don't care if you're getting food stamps. I don't care where you are in life. If you, listen, the most, the most powerful thing in the world is a made up mind. If you believe that you can do it, you start to change the way you think. You start to watch these type of pod, listen to podcasts, watch this stuff on YouTube. Look, look at my videos. You're going to get encouragement. You're going to get somebody's going to, I'm going to inspire you. And I'm going to hopefully motivate you to get out there and make some moves and do something, right? The, the worst thing you can do is sit around and wait on other people. The most important thing you got to do is be proactive with your money. You, you took the time to save up $2,000. Now you got to take the time to do these other things I'm talking about in this video to get to where you want to go. It's possible, right? Don't let anybody tell you it's not possible. Let's see here. Increase my emergency funds. Absolutely. So it's it's two thousand dollars. Pay off debt. Increase your own your emergency fund up to a full three to six months of your needs. I say three to six months of your needs, not your monthly bills, but your not not your monthly uh, budget, but your needs. Right. That's what I, I say. And then go back and fully fund that emergency fund. Pay off. Then and then you want to go ahead. That's after you pay off debt. Then you want to go ahead and increase your investing and saving and focus on assets, 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 assets. That's what's going to take you to you. You get wealthy by building assets. Right. So when you want to start to really build wealth, you have to go out and get yourself some assets. Right. And those assets and re, not having the liability side because you paid off debt. Those assets is what's going to increase your net worth as you twice a year three times a year, four times a year, check your net worth to see where you are. That's the blueprint. That's the blueprint. I hope I was able to help you guys out with this quick one, guys. I just wanted to real quickly give you what you should do and answer that question for that viewer. Because I know that's the reason I brought it up, because I know there's more people than just that viewer that have that question. I got my $2,000. Now what? Okay. If you jumped in here late, rewind it back to the beginning, hit the like button. And also, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. I really would appreciate it. I hope you have a great day today, guys. And listen, thanks for checking in. Thanks for chiming in. Thanks for helping each other in the chat. And hey, I always say this. The best person who's going to take care of the old you is the young you. Guys, take good care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.